Hey guys, welcome back to the Design Cure. My name is Brian Lee and I'll be your instructor for this lesson. In the previous lesson, we looked at how to navigate the Photoshop interface. So if you're new to Photoshop, I definitely recommend going back and checking out that first lesson. So at this point, I'm sure you guys are ready to dive in and start designing. But before we can do that, the first thing we need to do is create the 3D space that will house the design. In most cases, a client will give you a photo of a room they want designed and you will need to know how to translate that photo into a 3D space that you can then add furniture and appliances to. In general, most rooms can be broken down and summarized with five planes or walls, including three vertical walls, a ceiling, and a floor. As we know from the previous lesson, we can make a single plane using the marquee tool, but how do we manipulate that single plane into a room? In the following lesson, I'll teach you how to do that. Keep in mind, we do have a downloadable template available on the Design Cares website, built for all levels of Photoshop experience. It's filled with everything you need to quickly build custom rooms at the click of a button. Spend less time building rooms and more time on design. Uh, before we get into building our walls, there's a few tools I want you to learn. Um, so I'm going to make a new layer here in my Layers panel, Palette and I'm going to use my marquee tool. I can hit M and get that selected. I'm gonna then use the paint bucket tool to fill that. And with the selection, I'm gonna hit Command T. Um, this allows you to scale, rotate, uh, move around, and uh, do a lot of cool stuff. Um, I use this all the time, like I said, and this anchor point here is also important. You can see here if I move the anchor point to the right and hold Alt, I will scale to that anchor point. Now if I hold Alt and Shift, the object scales uniformly and will keep its shape. If I just hold Shift uh, and scale down, the image will scale towards its opposite corner that you're dragging from. Right, so Alt is important when using the anchor point. You can also hold Alt and click around and the anchor point will jump to wherever your mouse click is. Cool, so what else do we have in the transform tool? Um, in general, I don't use scale and rotate very much because the free transform does all that for me. Um, I don't really use skew too much, but just real quick, uh, you can see it does um, allow you to get some interesting shapes there and move things around. Um, I prefer to use uh, distort perspective and warp. So you can see here with distort, you can kind of do the same thing that the skew is doing, um, but you can do a lot more as well, right? Um, just playing around with that a little bit. We also have the perspective tool, and this is something we're going to be using a lot in this lesson. Um, it basically scales an edge and fits a shape into a given perspective, which is really cool when you're, uh, you know, looking up or looking down, or you have some walls that you're building back in a space. Um, perspective tool is definitely something we're going to be using a lot. Um, and then we have this warp tool, which is really cool when you're making like organic shapes. You can kind of, uh, you know, make light bulbs or interesting. Decorate, decorative shapes. Um, so there's that. Um, so that basically is the transform tool. One other real quick thing I want to show you. I'm going to duplicate this layer by dragging it into the uh, layers icon there. I'm going to hit Command T. I'm going to move this anchor point here to the side. And then I'm going to hit Flip Horizontal. So then we have two uh, pieces that are in perfect s sequence with each other in symmetry. Um, you can see we could also do something like this and move the anchor point way over here and then hit flip horizontal and it will just pivot right around that anchor point, which is kind of cool. Um, it definitely could be handy. And if you move it up, you could do the vertical flip. You know, so it helps you just kind of build a room or other uh, planar surfaces. Another important tool I want you to learn is the line tool. So if I go into here, 
this rectangle shapes uh, toolbox, I can have the line tool here. I'll show you in a minute why this is important, but just off the bat, the tool's kind of cool. You can go in here and set your weight, say to 20, and that's gonna give you a thicker line. There's also a lot of other settings. Uh, you could really lock it in and uh, dial in what exactly your line needs to be. You can give it a stroke. You can change the color here. And you can also uh, change it after you've already drawn the line, which is kind of a cool concept too. So you can see it, it kind of builds a bunch of layers. Um, what I usually do is after I have my lines made up, I just go ahead and I select them all by holding shift. And then I right click and then you can rasterize the layers, which will turn them into raster images that you can then uh, manipulate maybe with the transform tool you know you can put them in a perspective so after the line tool kind of know how that works now i think it's really important that you guys learn um, just basic perspective um, and that's going to help us build our room coming up so right off the bat i just uh, want to hit that line tool again hit command r all right, and then I'm gonna hit tab and I'm gonna remove everything from our space. So this canvas is approximately 27 by 15. Um, so if I hit Command R, I get these rulers coming up. So the cool thing about these is I can go up to these rulers palette and I can drag down. What I wanna do is find the center of this canvas. So 15, what is that, like seven and a half? I am definitely no mathematician. But I think that sounds right. And then let's pull it from the left. And 27, that would be, what is that, 13 and a half? Something like that. All right. So that's kind of roughly our, the center of our canvas. So I'm going to hit tab again. It's going to bring back my layers palettes. Just hold pan and get my canvas over here. So space bar to pan. Now I'm gonna grab that line tool and I'm just gonna start pulling out from the center. Whoops, I don't want it to be that thick. So I'm gonna go up here to weight. I'm gonna do maybe like a four pixel weight. And I'm just gonna pull straight out from the center and make, uh, make some lines right out here from the center. So as you may know, this is one point perspective. It's uh, drawing perspective lines from a single point along the horizon. Cool. So now we have a bunch of lines. Um, we have a center point. And uh, right now I'm just going to go ahead and select all these. Rasterize these layers. And then I'm going to take all those layers still selected. I'm going to merge those layers into one single layer. That's all by just right clicking on the layer. You can bring up um, all these options. So we'll go ahead and name that perspective. Now you may notice that some of the lines are off from center and that's okay for our purposes. But if you're getting specific, you want to make sure that they're all intersecting with that, that main point there. Turn the opacity down a little bit. You can see where that is. So that's another thing to note. Opacity is up here. You can adjust any layer with that. And then I'm going to hide these rulers again. I don't need those. I'm going to hit Command R. They're going to go away. If I hit Command H, all my uh, guidelines go away. And I'm just left with uh, what's left over. I'm going to make one more line. Looks like we kind of missed a spot. There we go. Go ahead and merge those again. Name that perspective. And that's our one point perspective. All right, so let's get started building our room. We have the perspective lines selected here. I'm just gonna lock those. I'm gonna make a new layer. I'm gonna call this center wall. I'm gonna hit the marquee tool. And then I'm gonna go to one of my perspective lines, which is leading into the corner. I'm gonna drag right from that to the other perspective lines that are leading to the corner. Keep in mind that that is um, 
a nice thing to have when you're trying to center your wall. Uh, by having those going directly to the corner, you can easily find out where the center of your canvas is. Um, and also where the center of any object you make is going to be. So I have those all intersecting, which is good. So that's most likely, or at least pretty close to my center. And then I'm going to hit the paint bucket tool. I'm going to fill that layer with orangey yellow. Deselect that with Command D. All right, so that's my center wall. I'm going to duplicate that a few times. One, whoops. I'm just going to hold Command or Alt and drag down. One, two, three, four. Let's call this one my left wall. Let's call this one right wall. Whoops. And we need the ceiling and the floor. Cool. So let's uh, go ahead and go to left wall here. I'm going to give that a bit of a different color. So let's go to paint bucket, go up to green. I'm just going to give each one of these a different color. So select that one. Let's go to dark blue. Let's go to the ceiling and make that one pinkish. This one, the floor. Let's do, I don't know, let's do a red. So now we have all of those made. What we want to do next is convert them into smart object. And this is an important step, guys. You do not want to miss this part. So let's go to floor. We're going to right click on floor. We're going to go to convert to smart object. We're going to do that to each one of these. And I'm going to go into why we're doing this in the future, but just for now, make sure you get this done before we start moving anything else around. Um, okay, so with the center wall selected, I'm just going to lock that. We don't want that to move. We want that to stay centered. My left wall, hit Command T. I'm going to hold Shift to keep it aligned. And I'm going to drag it to the left. Make sure it intersects with my center wall. Pan to the left so I can see what's happening here. Command T. I'm going to drag that in and then I'm going to hit perspective and it should line up pretty well with my perspective lines. All right, come to this side, right wall, going to do the same thing, command T, hold shift, drag to the right, make sure it stays intersected. I'm going to squeeze this in to fit in our canvas and then command or I'm sorry right click perspective drag it up all right pretty close and then let's go to the ceiling command T make sure it stays on my center wall perspective get the ceiling in whoops I forgot a little step there but we can fix it after we do this. You can see why it's a little easier to get it lined up with the canvas beforehand before you go into perspective. Okay, let's do it again to the floor, our final wall here. Command T, hold shift, drag down. Perspective with the right click. Did it again. Okay. Command T. Make sure it stays within our canvas here. Cool. So, um, you know, we're a little bit off here. Uh, some of that has to do with our perspective lines not being exactly accurate, but I think we're pretty close. So, um, I do want to make sure that they connect. Hit V for the move tool and then just use my arrows to kind of nudge it into place. Same with the floor, hit V, up arrow, just to nudge it into place. Um, so that's gonna get us pretty close. Let's move the perspective layer up above everything else just to see how we're looking. 
And that's looking like we're pretty aligned there. So for this lesson's exercise, I want you guys to build a room. Take a look around you. How would you build a room you're sitting? What would your center wall be? If you get stuck or have any other comments or questions along the way, perhaps I'm going too fast. Let me know in the comments section below. In the next lesson, we're going to get into some really fun stuff where we're going to be texturing walls, floors, adding doors, windows, and we're really going to start diving into the design elements here. Keep in mind, we do have a downloadable template available on the Design Cares website, built for all levels of Photoshop experience. It's filled with everything you need to quickly build custom rooms at the click of a button. Spend less time building rooms and more time on design. Again, be sure to subscribe to the channel and receive new tutorials every week that will help you master Photoshop for interior design. Thanks again for joining me and we'll see you next time.